Hey, what's up, YouTubers? It's JMV1701. I'm here with another Rolling Stones uh, lesson for you. Uh, probably one of my most um, requested songs to do was Can't You Hear Me Knocking. So I think I'll answer some of my uh, requests by doing this song. Um, I will confess that I don't really know the whole song, and like I said, I'm not the best guitar player. So I'm going to kind of do elements of Can't You Hear Me Knocking. Kind of like the, the lead part in the beginning, the intro, uh, how the chorus works, how the verse works. Um, basic, basically the, the main thrust of the song. Uh, I'm also going to keep it short by not really playing along with the uh, song because this is quite a long song. And the second half of it, I don't really know. It's just kind of a bunch of, it's a jam session anyway. So this is really the main part of Can't You Hear Me Knocking. All right, so I'm going to load down here so that you can see the guitar. All right. Okay, so as uh, in case you didn't know, it is an open G, so you're going to have to be an open G for this song. Uh, if you need any help on that, just watch one of my other videos. Um, it'll tell you how to get into the tuning, but I'm assuming that since you're watching this now, you are you know what open G is and you know how to get into it. So um, basically the song begins with uh, the opening riff. And I'll cover that right now. Now, one of the main things about the song you need to know is it's kind of a bit harder to pick than some of the other songs because uh, Mick Taylor is only playing certain strings at certain times, and that's really the key to the entire song. So, you know, sometimes he's only playing the top two strings, and then other times he's playing the middle strings. You know, so it's almost like... That's really the main part of the, the song, of learning how to kind of skip over strings and not play the entire thing. So the beginning of the song is, starts on the 10th uh, fret here, the two middle strings. Okay? And basically I'll play it slowly. The opening riff, the opening intro is... Which is 10, 9, 7. Then 10, 9, 7 on the next two strings. Okay? So that's where you're going to be skipping from. So the intro completely is 10, 9, 7, 9, 7. It's, uh, hold on, let me play it because I'm, I'm kind of messing myself up right now. Okay. So that's basically the entire intro right there. Now, through the intro, he's trying to do it. He's kind of doing different things. Like one time, he does kind of a. So basically, like, you can kind of make things up there based around that initial first thing. Um, that initial first thing. I mean, other times I think he's... Uh, sorry. I mean, it's a lead guitar part, so you're kind of meant to make your own thing of it and do what you want. But the basic thrust, that beginning part, those are the notes. Um to the, uh, those are the original parts to it, so, right, now, after the intro part, it goes into, straight into the verse riff, right, so it ends up, right, where the, where the intro goes into it, it goes, and it ends up on that seventh fret, now, to get into the verse, you just slide down to the fifth fret, And then that's the root note to the verse part. And the verse basically goes, which is basically the top two strings here, bottom two rather, or whatever side you're looking at the guitar, I call them the top, to the next two up, 
right? So what I usually do is when I skip up to the next two strings, I just kind of rest my pinky uh, against the E string here so that it won't ring out when I'm doing that. Then back up to the seventh fret. You got seven. Now the second part of that verse, as you hear, is an open, right? So basically the verse is played like this. I'm going to play it all the way through and then I'll break it down. So. So that's the uh, verse riff, okay? That's the whole verse, pretty much all the way through. So you hear the, did you hear me knocking? Right, but, and then the first half of the verse goes up, right up to the seventh fret. Second half breaks down to the open. Then back up to the seventh for the other half. Now, after the verse riff, it goes into the chorus, which is very easy. Anyone who knows ventilator blues. It's actually the same uh, riff, the uh, same um, chords, rather, in the chorus as ventilator blues. So basically the chorus, which I'll go from the second, the last part of the, the uh, last part of the verse into the chorus to show you. I screwed it up and it's four chords, it's the easiest part of the song. Anyway, it is open. Hear me. Tenth fret. Fifth fret. So that's the chorus. And then when it goes back into the verse, he kind of goes back to that original. And then I think, uh, wait a minute. Goes... It's like a quick version of jumping up to those second two strings. I'm kind of meandering around right now because honestly, uh, there's so many, like, he doesn't really play the same thing twice. So it's easy to kind of, once you learn the root notes and learn how the main thrust of the song is, it's easy to kind of put your own stamp on it. As long as you're playing the right chords and the right notes at the right time, you're going to be okay. It's not as complicated as it seems. And what, what, how I learned it, and for somebody who's not as, um, or even more technical, I don't know, but I'm not technical at all, and I'm not very good. But you slow the riff down at first, and you just learn those root notes. <laughs> You know, just the way he's skipping strings. I'm just making shit up now. But you understand what I'm saying. Um, that's the basic thrust of the song, and I hope that it helped. And uh, hopefully it's not too crazy and out there. <laughs> this is probably one of the least structured of my of my exploits. But, you know, if anybody has any questions about anything, and I can maybe uh, add anything to the uh, comments section, you just let me know. And that's my dog, Duncan. <laughs> Come here, Dunk. Um, yeah, so... 
we'll uh, we'll get we'll get back to you later. I have a couple other ones in mind. I might even do another one today. So hope you guys enjoyed it and um, catch you on the flip side.